Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is really part two of a talk yeah. because I was at the first uh, Nordic uh, Growth Hackers. When was this? Three years ago. Three years ago. So you had me wait quite a long time for the second part. So uh, these are old slides. <laughs> no, they're brand new actually. I'm Peter Engelbrecht. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Firma Phone. We develop a live communication solution that help companies build relations with their customers, also known as a telephone and chat system. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> really. And so, uh, uh, great talks up to now. I really enjoyed them. Uh, much more high level than, in a good way, than this stuff I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I did make note in my calendar that uh, we are in uh, September 2017, and you can now make jokes about Nazism. So, <laughs> so I, I intend to fully utilize that <laughs> by... Uh, by mentioning that, I think it was Goebbels who said, uh, when I hear the word culture, I reach for my gun. And uh, I think I, I could paraphrase that as, when I hear the word partners, I reach for my gun. And that seems to be like a theme, uh, a theme today. And it'll be a theme of my talk as well. <laughs> anyway, so let's get into it. Uh, as I said three years ago, let's go back in time. This is 2012. These are, everything today is actual data. There's no kind of made up stuff. Uh, this is actual data from, this is our sales, not our revenue, but our sales, how much we add it to our base. We are a uh, subscription business, obviously. Month by month in 2012. And uh, for those of you who are, who are in an early startup, I think you might, this might uh, make you uh, reminisce about some of the feelings you have, right? You go from February to, uh, to March, you're pretty happy. This thing will fly. Then you go from March to April. Oh, damn it. <laughs> We're all dead. <laughs> this is, I think some of them made that point. Do keep going. I mean, for one thing, we're in the B2B world. So uh, April, probably that year was Easter, I'm guessing. It was probably just seasonality. And lo and behold, we cracked it. We nailed it. We grew and we grew. And uh, you say it's, it's flattening. No way it's flattening. That was July. And in July in B2B, you normally you would be dead. So, uh, so you have to like double that part of the curve to get a sense of the underlying business momentum we had. So that was awesome. Uh, early 2012 was really great for me and the team. And then we get a little later, we, we look at churn every month. How many of our customers percentage-wise leave us? And uh, that looked pretty good. Flattish around 2%, 2 to 3%. And then in October, it just really it almost doubled. And, uh, and if you do calculate your lifetime values and try and see how much you can spend and so on, that, that gets concerning. And um, so we needed to try and figure out what was the problem. Is it something, you know, typically the, the uh, instinct is to say, what did we change? What are we doing here in October? Did we change the product maybe? Hold on, we changed the opening hours in our support line. Maybe that's it. Or, you know, whatever else. You look at the moment where it happens. And uh, that, can, that can be a little bit of a... It can deceive you. And uh, there's another tool that can be potentially helpful in situations like that. And it's to look at cohorts. And so what I want to do today, uh, and I apologize to those of you who have uh, already been all through all this. You can probably take a break for the next couple of minutes. Uh, but I wanted to start from the, from the 101 of cohorts, just explain what it is, right? A cohort is basically a group of something with shared characteristics. So in this context, it's most often a group of customers. And uh, it helps you uh, compare apples to apples. So you, you find out all the apples in, amongst your customers, you find the apples and you kind of study them and try and compare them. Uh, and also think of it as untangling all the information you have in your data that's kind of bundled together. I'll explain, I'll show exactly what I mean by this. Some examples is customers won the same quarter. That could be one cohort that you study, but it could also be customers from the same customer segment. Every customer, customer in the retail segment. Or it could be customers using the same product or plan. All my customers who use mobile phone subscriptions. 
And the cohort analysis, we really tend to do two different cohort analysis, and I'll explain both of them today, and they're, they're quite useful and they complement each other well. The, one, the first one is time-based, and that's really studying these all the customers that came in during a certain period of time. And uh, the trick here is to study their age instead of their dates. So you don't care if they spent money in October 2010, you care about how many months was that after when they signed up. And then you have the segment-based, uh, and uh, you study things like uh, lifetime value, churn, or average MR uh, based on these segments. And it will help you understand which segments are good and which segments are bad. So quickly, the time-based cohorts, you've probably seen these stacker charts type. I'll just quickly explain them. Uh, you have, uh, we tend to have it in the, the, the column here, which month was the customer one, right? So, so this is the first month we, of the study we're doing here, January 15th. By the way, this is not real data. Sorry, I said everything was real. This is fake data. Uh, I like to be precise. This is fake. Uh, these are all the customers. This is revenue from customers we won in, in January, February, March, and so on. So the date we won them, and this is how much they spend with us. So in January, only the January cohort spends money. These guys haven't even become customers yet, and you can see it, it, adds, up, it adds up as we go along. And when I talked about untangling data, the, the trick is to fish out these numbers from the total numbers. Really, we tend to look at the total of this, how much revenue did we have in April? And it's a sum of these numbers, right? But most often, you just look at the sum. Just as the very first chart, it was just something that happened every month. Uh, but where, where cohorts get exciting is like this, this type of uh, exciting, interesting, maybe it's a better <laughs> word. Uh, like these are all the fifth month revenues. So now we're apples to apples, right? So we can see that uh, February seems to be still a lot better than January. It was twice as big to begin with. It's still twice as big, so that's good. But we're comparing apples to apples here. Um, let's look at some other cohorts. So the May cohort, that went from 300 to 277. The June cohort went from 350 to 251. So this looked better to begin with, but it turned out to be worse. Fairly, very simple example. This, but it's basically this that you just do on a slightly more sophisticated level. Let's get back to the real, this is real data again. We're, we're an old company. I mean, we're not a startup. We're from, this data is from 12 and onwards, right? And it's actually all the way up till today. Uh, so the chart I showed in the beginning where we sold a lot was in, 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 in um, 2012. These, these are quarters, so these are the first two quarters in 2012. This is, this is what we're trying to study. And what we see is sales is really good because this area this is color-coded. The darker it is, the more revenue there is in that part of the business. This was, this was the peak you saw in sales. This is dark. Sales was great. Fantastic. But the retention was really bad. As these cohorts age, they don't produce as much revenue as this. Take this cohort up here. It's, it's about half the size. But up here, it's, it's uh, much bigger than these. So there's something wrong with these cohorts. There's a problem with them. They don't uh, retain the revenue. They churn. And a way to look at it more clearly, actually, there's, there's a line here that's uh, in the slide, but it's not visible. And it's a link to the code that generates this chart. And I think the slides get distributed out, no? Anyway, send me an email. I'll share the code with you. Uh, so if you want to build a chart like this, easy peasy. Uh, this is absolute revenue. That's useful because it's, it shows you, well, we do, we do tend to, uh, th this is as we, start, as we start selling to this customer, you want it to be darker and darker. Like here was bad, we sold less and less, now we sell more and more. So that direction is good to get darker, and then you want it to, to remain dark, right? L I love this cohort, for example. This is January 2000. It's like a personal friend. Uh, sorry, April 2013. The first full quarter, we sold 273,000. And now, 18 quarters later, we sell 315,000. So that's awesome. That's customer retention. All right, sorry. Got uh, carried away there. Uh, this one is another view of the same data. It's a relative retention. So this shows you percentage-wise how much do we keep of each cohort. And then you can compare the retention more directly. And you can see 
it's even more clear how bad 2012 was. So now we know why the churn went up. It was the, it was the customers we took in in the summer of 2012. They were bad. And that's just as we peaked. Uh, and, and well, there's another analysis, which is you take each cohort, list them by the x-axis, and you show aggregate in the lifetime of this cohort, what's the churn. And again, you can see two, mid-2012, that's, that's where churn goes up. Just an, another chart that's useful sometimes to tell you where the problem is. Now we know where the problem is, but we don't know. We know where it is, but we don't know what it is. Uh, all right, so now we'll get into the segment analysis. <laughs> can see you're getting excited. <laughs> Love this stuff, huh? So what we do is we look at our customer base in two different points in time. So just as an example here, I'm saying like last August and this August. And then we have some customers here, and there are different segments. It could be whatever, what part of the country they're from. The yellow segment, and we have the gray segment. And I'm interested in what happens to the yellow segment. What happens to our customers from Funan, for example? So what happens is some of them will leave us. They just uh, close their account. They're no longer with us. They're churned. And uh, we had some new one on Funan. They came in, and they'll be part of the August data set. And then those two, they remained, but they changed in size. Maybe they, they got bigger or smaller. And, and the trick is to make sure in your data you compare these four to those two. You've got to exclude those two, and you've got to exclude those three. And so that's kind of a, it's a little hairy. But uh, again, there's a script included in the presentation that will do it for you. All right, so we did exactly this except our segmentation was sales channel. We have three different sales channels. We have the direct channel, which is our salespeople go out and find the customer. We have the organic or inbound sales channel. Customers come to us and sign up for our product. And we have the partner sales channel. <laughs> and uh, so what we did was we looked at churn for 2012 to 2013, split out on these channels, channel cohorts, if you will. And here you can see what the problem is. Direct sales is awesome. Organic sales is almost as good. Partner sales is pretty bad. Twice as much churn, that's really, really painful. Half the, half the lifetime value. So we got our answer, we got our conclusion. Stop selling through partner channels, they don't work. By the way, it's an example, but it's typically the answer I find in all the businesses I look at. <laughs> For many reasons. I actually, I explained the exact mechanics of why this happened, because in hindsight, it's simple, right? The way partners sell telephony solutions is they call a customer and they said, how much are you paying for your phone system right now? Well, I'm paying 199 Okay, I can sell it to you for 189 Great, I'll buy it. They buy it, and then lo and behold, next week, somebody else calls them and says, how much are you paying for your phone system? 189 I can sell it to you for 179 and they turn out again. So if you can only sell on price, uh, it's a race towards the bottom. That's not good. And uh, that's one problem with partners. The other problem with partners, at least in my experience, is that you get removed from your customer and you don't get the unfiltered customer feedback. And I think we talked about in the, in the iMotions uh, presentation, I th thought those were some great points. Uh, being really close to your customers is very hard when you, uh, when you sell to them through partners. At least partners as a sales channel. All right, and, and the segmentation we did on partner channels, we do that on, on a, I wish we could see the entire slide, on a, a bunch of different segments, and I'll show you a couple here, like we do them on our product families. So we sell mobile subscriptions, we sell uh, switchboard solutions, virtual switchboards, and we sell the, and some customers have the combination of the two. And we study, you know, for example, if you only buy our switchboard solution, uh, you're, you're the smallest, but your annual revenue retention is over 100% because you tend to go and buy other parts of our solution. Whereas if you only buy our mobile solution, somebody else calls you the next day and says, do you want to pay 179 And you move away. So the annual retention is lousy. And so this tells us, you know, stop selling just plain mobile products. We figured that out as well from studies like this. <coughs> 
And um, another one is, you know, whenever you're an SME focused uh, software as a service business as we are, all you ever read about, all people tell you is go up market, you gotta go up market, you gotta go up market. But when you actually study our uh, segment, size segments, this is the number of employees on the system, you can just tell that the monthly churn is actually best in the middle. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, that's just for, for our business. So just examples of, I think, really interesting insights you can get in your business if you use the, the cohort methodology. So, in summary, well, actually, that's, I think that's one quite important thing I forgot to remember to explain. Ah, this is, this is a problem. Normally, you just look month to month. And so you say, what happened in, from August to September? Um, and so I think that's just, just giving you like 50% of the picture, maybe 25% of the picture. What was, our what was our churn this month? Most businesses can answer that. Or what was our revenue growth this month? Most businesses can answer that, but not where it came from in the cohorts. All right, so very good. Chance to look at that again. In summary, looking strictly at the aggregate, which is my term for that uh, perspective, uh, misses important information. Uh, so I recommend you break your data into cohorts. And after you've done that, then break it down into some more cohorts. One, start with a time perspective and then just start looking at segments. And uh, make sure that it ultimately translates into action. So this is, I think, uh, maybe I, I actually felt like I wanted to ask the, uh, answer that question about where to start, but you got to answer it, even though you weren't in the panel. <laughs> So I no, so I didn't answer it. But now I, I'm up here, so I'll answer it. I think it's very important to start with the questions. And so what I tend to find is is people they 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 tend to look at all the answers they can find, but really you should start with the questions because there are way too many answers. Your your data can tell you too much. And so in my experience, it's better to figure out, you know, what is the most important thing for us to figure out in the business this quarter or this year or this month and then focus in on that. And so for us, maybe it was figuring out our, our channel strategy. And so we looked at data just pertaining to that. And we changed our ch uh, uh, channel strategy based on that analysis. We no longer sell through partners. It could be your customer segment focus. Is it, is it really good for us to move up market? Well, the data, data doesn't support it right now. Could be your product focus. Uh, we put so much more focus on solution selling and selling the whole stack of products because we can see the lifetime value is, is just uh, exponentially higher when we do that. So uh, make sure that your analysis leads to action. Otherwise, you should stop doing that analysis because you have a limited supply of time for analysis. Thank you. I think that was, the, that was everything. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>